Father, we are so grateful because we are so privileged to be numbered amongst those who worship you. What a privilege, oh God. We bless and magnify your most holy name. For it's in you we live and move and have our being. In you is our breath, our daily life. We worship your majesty, O King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And we ask that it may please you to come and fellowship with us. May your spirit possess us like never before. May he instruct us, teach us, empower us, that we may rise to become the men and the women you want us to be to the end that your kingdom may prosper in our lives and then prosper through us everywhere we go, all to the glory of your most holy name. For it is in Jesus' awesome name we pray. And all the people said, Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone to careless meeting, worship experience today. We praise and magnify our God for the gift of life, for all his manifold favors that we receive daily. Blessed be God. Amen. Okay, building. We continue on building a people of power. And today, our meditation is on time to join the conversation. Time to join the conversation. If you have not joined already, this is the time to join the conversation. Malachi chapter 3, we begin to read from verse 13. Malachi chapter 3. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? Verse 15. So now we call the proud blessed. For those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. Verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord, they spoke to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. So, a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and for those who meditate on his name. Verse 17, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels and I will spare them, as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then verse 18. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Can somebody say a big amen? Oh, yes. That distinction is always necessary in every society between those who love God and those who don't. Indeed, it is time to join the conversation. But which one? There are two conversations going on here. The first is by the complainers, the complainers. You know, uh, Pastor Shoke mentioned something about that this morning. 
They complain us. Everywhere you go, you find them. I said to a young man on, uh, on my class platform, say, we are going to pray about you. Say, doctor, <laughs> we have prayed enough. It's finished. You know, there's nothing that we can pray again. There are many complainers. And then there is the conversation, the second conversation by the true worshipers. And these two groups are found in church. They're all in church. How do we know that they are found in church? Let us look at the complainers first. Verse 14 says, this is what they're saying. It is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts. So now we call the proud blessed. For those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. Do you know that this was responsible for the unbelievable evil under Ahab? Oh, yes. That is what was responsible. Because his wife is a Sidonian, and the people are very rich. The Sidonians, they are the Phoenicians, all those traders that uh, have a lot of gold and spices. And the people were like, ah, these are the people, they are worshipping who? Baal, they are worshipping Baal. And look at how what? Prosperous their country is. It is better we do what? Join them. Yes, so better we join them. And that's how Ahab and his wife Jezebel, who is a Sidonian, you know, established the worship of Baal in Israel. And there, are, and there are many people. There are many people. Some may not be bold enough to say it, but they are still saying it in their heart. You know, look at these unbelievers. Eh? Look at them, you know. And, and you, you, if you read Psalm 73, you will know it is in the Bible. He said, my foot nearly slipped. You know, why? Because I was, I was envious of the wicked when I saw their what? Prosperity. You know, it's all about prosperity. It's all about money. It's all about uh, financial increase. You know, when I saw how the unbelievers were prospering, I was like, ah, what is the benefit of all this uh, holiness? You know, it doesn't seem to be working. And there are many people, they are trapped in this now. I told you the story. My brother told me of a friend of his. Together, they were fighting against corruption. And then he said, after some time, he didn't see him again. Then one day he saw him. He was already in Abada with his briefcase. And my brother asked him, what is happening? He said, no, nah, I can't die. I cannot die. And it's not me that will save this Nigeria. <laughs> you know, I cannot continue. The suffering is, uh, yes, yes. I, can, I have to join them. I just have to. In church, yes, it's happening. It's happening. They would come to the night vigil to Rorila Mandala. In the morning, they've joined them. You see, it is called meaningless religion. Meaningless. The complainers are saying, we have continued to serve God in vain. So now, they call the proud. You see, you go, you see people really proud. You know, they say, you see, God has already uh, blessed them. But why? Because they have plenty of what? Money. It's all about money. How can a person in the church say that it is useless to serve God? You know? 
The reason is because of what we call the mammon spirit. Mammon, mammon. Because everything is denominated in what? Money. Yes. Everything is denominated in money. It's about money. It doesn't matter how you get it. No. You know? We call it mercantilism. You know? Everything is about money. The worship of God, they say, must yield you material gain. How can you? I told you before how I went to a wedding to preach, okay? And uh, uh, a gentleman came and met me. He said, Doctor, where is your car? I took him outside and I showed him, you know. You know the old Mercedes, not a V boot, the one before. Yes, I bought it used, you know, from a, a friend of ours, you know. And I've been driving it uh, 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 for years. Do you know? I didn't know. I didn't know that it was uh, not only that man that was worried about that my car. My children later told me that they too were worried. <laughs> you know. Then that man, he said to me, he said to me, doctor, doctor, you have to show that this gospel is uh, working. Yes, doctor, eh, how can you be driving this thing? You know, you have, to, you have to show that this gospel is working. So how else do I show it? By the car I am, uh, huh? you know, this is what is going on. So that if if you don't know where you are going, they will seduce you into joining them. If you don't know who has called you, you know, they will make you enter something you don't know anything about. So the worship of God must benefit us materially. If it is not benefiting us, then it's not necessary because it's not relevant to life. It must guarantee personal comfort. It must guarantee personal wealth and increase. It must. It has to. It has to. If it's not guaranteeing it, you have to make it do it. Mm. And there are ways to make it do it. There are ways. You know? Say, bring, bring uh, uh, 5,000 now. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, um, um. Um, Oshoki read it for us. But tomorrow by this time, eh, a bag of rice will be 10 naira. That's what they call 24 hour miracle. Yes, a bag of rice will be 10 naira. If it is, you wake up tomorrow, a bag of rice is not 10 naira. You look for somebody's bag of rice to carry so that uh, it will be 10 naira. Yes. So it's important for you and I to understand the, conf the conversation of the complainers. Okay? It must guarantee all their personal needs and comforts. And if it doesn't, then it is not profitable. In the days of Malachi, these people were guilty of saying harsh things against the Lord. For one thing, they felt that serving the Lord was drudgery. Not the word boring, boring. I told you the story about um, the, the, the preacher's story about the man who died and was going to go to heaven. And then when he got there, the angel said, okay, you are here. It's okay. Now, they have decided that you should decide here where you want to go. So, they have ordered that you go to and spend one day in hell and then one day in heaven. And then you can finally decide. It's okay. So, the first day he spent in hell and when he got there, wow! A huge party was on. You know, with Remy Martin. Remy Martin. <laughs> you know, and all kinds of musicians. And, and the man said, this place is really 
exciting. <laughs> okay, so after the first day, it's okay. Come and go to heaven for one day. Then he went there. And all he saw were people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he came out, they asked him, so which, which side do you want to go? The man said, I really came here to go to heaven. But that hell is very exciting. That hell is very exciting. So, so you want to go to hell now? I think so. It's very, really exciting. It's okay. So, off he went to hell. Then when he got there, uh -uh, people are screaming, fire, fire, fire. He said, ah. Uh -uh. Then he saw one of the angels. He said, is this hell? He said, yes, this is the hell. He said, what about that place I got to two days ago? You know, where there was a big party with drinks and, and, and dance. And the man said, oh, that one is the advert. <laughs> he said, you are falling for the advert of hell, not the reality. And that's exactly what many people are doing. You know, you see all this glamour. You see all this glamour. You are swept away. Not knowing that at the end of it, like Solomon said, there is a way that seemeth what? Right to a man. But at the end of it is death. At the end of it is death. In fact, it is said that in the days of Malachi, you know, the priests, the priests were at the head of that complaint. Many of the priests were at the head of that complaint. Because, you see, if you, for, if you read the earlier chapter, the tithes and offerings were not uh, coming. You know, that's why the prophet said, shall a man rob God? They say, ah, we rob, you say, in tithes and uh, offerings. Yes. And, you know, every time tithes and offerings didn't come to the church, the priests all uh, disappeared. Yes, they disappeared because there's no means of sustenance. You know? So, so, so it's important to understand what this uh, conversation is about. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart. That is the way he is. You may not have been one of those bold enough to be saying it. This, uh, this whole thing is really boring. This whole thing is really not profitable. You may not be among those bold enough to be saying it, but you are thinking it. Oh yes, it's in your heart. It is in your heart. Okay? They're complaining. We're not getting anything out of this thing. You know? Things just keep getting... Uh, Worse. Oh, yes. Every time, it's getting worse. Sometimes, in these times, the preachers are leading this conversation. And some of them, their purpose is to lure people to their churches. They start naming their churches. Solution. Se uh, solution center. Solution center. Say, so where are you going? Solution center. <laughs> I'm going to solution center. <laughs> you know, the impression they give is that, um, that um, you know, if you come here, once, once we touch you, woo, off you go, you prosper and increase. Yeah, and I know that <laughs> all these things are not true. I went somewhere. A, a lady told me that uh, he went to one meeting. They said, if you want 24 hour miracle, Bring out, I don't know how much they brought out. He said, two years later, I'm still waiting for the 24 hours. Yes. Because you see, that's what they call statistical probability. Do you know that? Statistical probability. If I come here and there are 1,000 people, and I say, five of you here, Awake at 1 a.m. last night. Stand up. 
You may find up to 20 people. Yes. They say it's prophecy. No. It's not prophecy. That is, this is not prophecy. It's not prophecy. It's statistical probability. When I was uh, in school, you know, I used to read horoscope, you know, before I became a Christian. So in that horoscope, they said on the, on the 13th or 15th, you have headache. I said, hey, I have a headache also. <laughs> it's me they are writing about. And then they said on the 21st, on the 21st, they said, there's something they wrote there is also happening. I said, ah! So one boy, one student in Germany, he sat down in his room. He wrote horoscope, you know, and he put his uh, phone number. And he was getting calls from everywhere. Ah, how did you know about me? <laughs> he did not have any. He just sat down and wrote it. That's what they call statistical probability. There are so many people that, that whatever you write, you will find someone that it applies to. Because the people are many. So, so it's important to understand all these things that are going on. Because a lot of people are carried away. They are carried away. Instead of following this word of God carefully. Sometimes in this time, the preachers are leading this conversation to lure people to their churches where they claim material needs are seemingly met by the wave of a magic wand. You know, if they blow on you and you fall down, you are supposed to get up and become a millionaire. You know, where in the world do you find such principles in the Bible? They don't exist. It's all manufactured. Now, through this kind of conversation, they create a lot of dissatisfaction and disillusionment amongst believers. You know, because you see, because you see, if you are trying to follow the Lord, to love the Lord, to worship the Lord, to live sacrificial, to, 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 to practice self-sacrificing love. If things are not going for you, they are telling you you are doing it. Uh, yeah, you are wrong. It's because you are, you know, you are still doing Old Testament uh, uh, Christianity. Come and join the, the new thing. So, a lot of people are, that's why a lot of people are gravitating from one to the other. What are they looking for? Solution. Solution. That's how I went to church and I joined a, a, a men's Sunday school class. And one young man said, but when we, why is it that when we come to church and we pray and pray and pray, we don't get answers. But when we go to Babalawu, in church, I was there. This is not hearsay. Yes. So that was a revelation to me that people who are coming to church every day, they also yes, so they also going. That's what I used to tell them in our church. I said, you know, there are some people you cannot, they cannot follow you to equip for evangelism. No, they cannot follow you. Because if the Babalao comes there, I say, ah! Look, that is our man. <laughs> ah, I didn't know that you do this side too. Eh? <laughs> so you do our side, you do this side. Okay. That is it. They cannot go. They cannot go. Because they visit those places in the night. One woman came and said that um, uh, um, uh, in, our, in our church, she said that, I went to Babalao for the first time. But the person who took me is in this church. Yes. Yes. So all sorts of things are going on. Because people are looking for solution. Solution. It's all about man's welfare. That's the gospel they're preaching. So if your welfare is not being taken care of, then that God is wrong. Come, we will show you the God that is better. So it's, impos it's important to recognize all the conversations that are going on around you 
And make sure you don't join the wrong one. I mean, make sure you don't, yes, make sure you don't join the wrong one. They cause the people to be disenchanted with their God and with their churches. And as a result, they hop from church to church looking for where they have the so-called solution centers. They abandon the God-centered gospel, you know, you know, of which Job said, even if he kills me, yet I will what? Serve him, you know? Even if he kills me, even if I'm, David said, he said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of unrighteousness. So many people have forgotten the gospel to which we are called. That it is not about welfare, material welfare and well-being. I told you the story of a lady who met me. This was in London. He said to me, doctor, they used to tell us every time that we must bring the tithes into the storehouse and God will do what? Open the windows of a... Eh? Say, doctor, now I don't have work. Home. I lost my job. Please help me tell them to open this uh, window. Yes, so because I was paying my tithe faithfully. They must open this window. They must open this window. <laughs> so I said to her, I said to her, how much price do you put on the fact that you are alive? Hmm? Are you better than those who have uh, died already? You know, you are alive. You are well. You are eating and drinking. The only thing is that you just lost your job. Is that why God is no longer relevant in your life? Because of a little uh, a, 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 a problem you, you are facing? So when, when you, they preach a man-centered gospel, that is how all the misery is coming. And all of a sudden, the conversations you are hearing, they are changed that changed. A lot of grumbling and complaining and it's all about their welfare. It's all about their welfare. That's what all the grumbling and complaining. Nobody is suggesting by any stretch of imagination that um, God doesn't take care or shouldn't take care or wouldn't take care of his people. The Bible is replete with assurances that God will take care of us. Oh yes. You know, I told you of one of my experiences when I lost my job and, and, and um, when I went to God, he told me, go and continue fasting and uh, eh? I fasted um, and prayed for, for two weeks. I went back to God. He said, ah, continue eh? fasting and praying. I fasted for another two weeks. I went back to God. He said, continue. I said, I'm not continuing again. I am not continuing again. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Go to that hospital. They will give you work. So I went there. The doctor said, ah, you're just the man I'm looking for. Somebody is leaving here in two weeks. So come back in uh, two weeks and resume. So the spirit said, okay, so now continue eh, fasting and pray. So I continued though. Two weeks I dressed up and went to the place. He said, ah, that boy didn't live again. <laughs> he said he didn't live again. You know, that is, that is what we were doing for nine months. Yes, I lost everything. My wife is here, she can testify. I lost my house. I, the little, little locums I was doing, I found them small money to go and give my landlady. You know, we are living in Lupeji, say, where do you think you are? You think you are in Ajegule, where they are paying rent, uh, small, small like that. Say, the least you can bring here is six months. I said, madam, please have pity. Please pack up if you don't have any money. That's how I, I packed up, oh. 
I didn't have house again. Yes. Yes. You know, you know, a lot of people are, 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 are thinking, you know, how can you say you're fasting and praying and things are going from bad to... Eh? A man has to be trained by God to live the life he is called to live. And they don't train anybody in a vacuum. No, they train you in the reality of your life to become the man or woman that God wants you to be. That's the whole idea. And while you are going through that process, some people are in the side thinking, and he says he's serving God, and he says he's serving God. And that conversation may reach you, and then just derail you. Just derail you totally. And that's why you must, you must be careful. The conversation that you are joining, you must be sure, careful to join the right conversation. Okay. When severe hardship is a reality, faith is constantly under threat. Constantly under threat. And believers, they run into the danger of saying things they should not be what? Saying at all. Yes. In Igbo land, we call it ikufiono. Ikufiono, you know. That is, he has said something he should not be saying. Yes, because of situation. You open your mouth. You say something you should not be saying. It's important. It's important for you and I to pay very close attention to this. Because the Bible says the God in heaven. He is taking what? Record. He's taking record. Some people think that it's only the people talking correctly that is uh, taking their own record. Everybody that is talking, they're taking their own record. It is in these situations that those who are worldly and ungodly, they may appear to be getting along because they cut corners and make compromises. You know? And all of a sudden, cutting corners and making compromises is looking attractive. You know, they make it look attractive. A lady said, this is a Christian lady, she wrote it in a magazine, that um, all of a sudden people were glamorizing adultery. You know, yes, this is so exciting, you know. You know, to have all these flings, you know, you really come out uh, ex 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 exhilarated. So, see, one day she decided that maybe she should. Uh, yes, so be careful what conversation you are listening to. Be careful. So, he said there was this guy in their company, and they, they arranged to have this uh, affair so that she would really see how exciting it is. So they checked, they, they booked a hotel. She said she got there first. This is in a magazine she wrote. She said she got there first. And she uh, checked in, took the key, and was waiting for the man to arrive. Then, fortunately for her, the spirit started to ask her, Mrs. So-and-so, what are you doing? Yes. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What will you say you are looking for here? He said that the voice was so powerful that she got up, folded all her things back, carried her bag, went to the airport, and flew home to her family. That's how God delivered her. Because a lot of people, they glamorize sin. They make it look so wonderful. You know, that people who are godly are feeling cheated. Be careful what conversation you are, you are listening to. This is what Malachi was talking about. Values and godly principles are turned upside down. So now we call the proud blessed. For those who do wickedness are raised up. 
They even tempt God and go free. Yes, yes. Some people might live in some ways and you're like, and you're like, I think soon something will uh, uh, happen to them. It doesn't happen, no. You know, you saw them when they started evil and they were in their 40s. Now they're in their 80s. They're still there. And you're like, hey. Yeah? I said, there's a God in heaven. And he told us in Genesis 15 that there is something called the cup of what? Iniquity. The cup of iniquity. You know, you don't know how big that man's cup is. You know, they didn't say that everybody's cup is the same uh, size. No, no. And you don't know what, that that man, when he sins big, then he will start sinning uh, small, 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 small. And then the, his cup is big. So they're, they're, they're watching him. See, you, you, and I, you and I have no part in, the decision, in these decisions. And that's why you should watch the conversation you are listening to so they don't derail your faith and, and, and cause you to lose eternity. So, it is important to avoid those who think that doing wrong can be profitable. Stay away from such people who give the impression that doing wrong is profitable. That's why David said in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Number one, he does not stand in the way of sinners. Number two, he does not sit in the seat of the scornful. Number three, three, so blessed is that man. He doesn't follow their counsel. He doesn't follow their ways. He doesn't listen to their conversation. Say, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates her often day and night. He's buried, struggling, listening, discerning the principles of godly living. The principles of godly living. And then the reward comes. He is like a tree. Planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, yes, he prospers. You see, see, maybe you saw him in those days when they are training him. You know, they are training him so that he will become the man or woman that God wants him to be. You know, that's when you met him. But you didn't wait to see what God will make out, out of all of that and how God will bless him. So maybe now when you, when you now see him, when God is blessing him, they say, ah, you are one of the lucky few. Mm, mm. Go to the church now. You see all, many of them are just singing, nobody knows. The trouble I have seen. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that God must train you and I. Because every one of us will have the same goal. To conform us into the image of who? Christ. Yes. You know, so that you have the capacity, you have the power to discern between right and wrong. And then the inner strength to choose right always rather than wrong. That's what is, the whole thing is all about. That's what the Christian Academy is all about. To train you and I to choose right from wrong. And that's why the Bible has warned us. The Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Evil communication. Corrupts what? Good man. If you keep listening to this type of conversation, sooner than later, you will join them. You will join them. And that's why it's important in the, in the building of a people of power. They, they have to be wise. They have to be smart. 
to know what they shouldn't do so that the anointing doesn't leave them. Because if you, if you carry the anointing and you join them, uh, the thing about the anointing is that when it leaves you, you won't know. You will not know. You will be like Samson. I will go out and do what? Shake, shake. The anointing is in the shaking. It's not in the shaking. The anointing is not in the shaking. The apostle Paul said, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some in the church, they do not have the knowledge of who? God. He said, I speak this to your shame. It is so shameful that somebody is in church. He has no knowledge of God. He has no knowledge of God. Okay, we leave them alone. Let us go to the believers' conversation, the true worshippers. Verse 16, then those who feared the Lord, they spoke to one another. Okay? And the Lord listened and heard them. So, a book of remembrance was written before God for those who fear the Lord, for those who meditate on his name. So, pari pasu, like they say, with these complainers, there are also the true believers. Okay? They also had their own what? Conversation. Yes, that's why this message is, it's time to join the word conversation. It's time so that you will define where, who, where you are. You know, you define what position you have taken. You define who you are serving. You know, join the conversation. Let us, let us know the one you are in. Let us know the conversation you are in. They remain faithful to their God because they know that eternity, <laughs> that there is no way you can compare eternity to time. That's why I say to people, how long do you want to live? How long do you want to live? They say, well, at least 100. I say, no, let me add 50 for you. <laughs> let me add 50 for you. Take 150. So after that, what will happen? <laughs> but do you know that that 150, it, eternity has not even begun. Yes, eternity has not even begun. So how can somebody tra trade uh, eternity for time? Uh -uh. Where, when you are already tired, you know, of all the increase and prosperity, and then they say you are now dead, but they, somebody who is in eternity, they haven't even uh, warmed up at all. And so to trade in your eternity for time, it's foolishness of the, of the highest order. So, the question before us in today's uh, meditation is, have you joined the right conversation? Have you joined the people that are encouraging you to faith and godliness? The people that are strengthening you. So, so no matter how difficult things may be for you, hold on family. There is a God in heaven. With time he will visit you. Okay? And things will what? Turn around. Yes. He will visit you. You see, I cannot guarantee you when he will visit you. But I can guarantee you he will visit you. If you stay faithful and loyal to him. I can guarantee you he will visit you. You know, I've told you my experience. When he told me to, to, to break with my supervisor in, in America, and everything, literally, from being a blue-eyed boy, everything just collapsed. I told you the prayer I used to pray. Say, Lord, Lord, I am sure you know what you are doing. But as for me, I don't know what you are doing. But since you know what you are doing, it's okay. That's the prayer I used to pray. It's okay. 
I will just continue to follow you. You know? So, so, so it looked as if the, 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 the world has bottomed out. But by the time we came here, and two years later, pioneered the first private dialysis in Nigeria, it all made sense. It all made sense. Because if I had continued there, I would have just been one nephrologist amongst the... Uh, yes, when I came here, uh-uh. <laughs> everything was open and beckoning. You know? So it's important. It's important to, to understand that God, he will, he will train you, he will fashion you, and he will strengthen you so that you will become the light in a world of what? Darkness. That's the whole idea. And all those people, by the time their world begins to twist and turn, they will be coming to you for counseling. Yes. They will be coming to you for counseling. Their primary qualification, okay, stated here is that they fear God and as a result, the, those who join the right conversation, they have the fear of God where? In their hearts. Yes. You know, there is nothing like the fear of God. I tell people why the fear of God is very important in the life of a Christian. Because, you see, if you are doing what is right because of the fear of your mother, okay, when you, are, you travel to, 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 to Abuja, your mother is not there. So you will feel, uh, ah, at last I'm free. Let me even breathe a little. <laughs> that is the problem about the, using the fear of man to do what is right. You may be, maybe because your pastor is around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you come? Hey, no, I can't come. <laughs> uh, my, my, my pastor is here. I cannot. Uh, that is it. <coughs> but you see God. <laughs> That's why the fear of the Lord. The Bible says by the fear of the Lord, people depart from what? Evil. Why? Because the fear of the God is everywhere. God is everywhere you are. And he's taking what? Note. He's taking record. Is taking record. You may see it, say it, do it, organize it, and think that nobody knows. Yes, nobody may know. But God, ah, he has the record. You know, and that's why the scriptures say in Galatians 6, 7, don't be deceived though. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, ah, he's going to reap it. He's coming back. He's coming back to you. So the, the, the people who are godly, they are very careful because they know the way the system runs. They know that they serve a God who is seeing and noting everything. So you cannot afford to take chances. That's why the Bible says, you see, in Proverbs, it said, my son, when sinners entice you, what should you do? Do not consent to, you know, when they say, come, let us go and do this. Don't agree, oh. Don't agree. Join the right conversation of people who fear the Lord. I remember some years ago, a friend of ours who was a, a, a local government counselor, he came to our house. You know, he brought my wife and I one contract paper. He said, we have been awarded contract to build culverts in Shomolu. I said, ah, how he come rich us? He said eh, that eh, in, the, in the chamber that people were just grabbing, grabbing, you know. She said, eh, eh, who do I know? Who do I know? Doctor, he put my name. He said, madam, I now know why those culverts are falling. <laughs> I now know why those culverts are coming. Please, oh, go and remove my name from that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, so, so all kinds of things. Eh, eh, eh. Then, then, then she told us, he said, the, the, uh, you must pay 10% to the party. And she told us, he said, I said, please, just run back to where you brought that paper. <laughs> you know, you know, all of a sudden, you know, 
people will turn uh, culvert builders, turn all kinds of things because of uh, money. Yes. And then, you, after you've given them the, the, the 10%, you find that you cannot build the culvert correctly again. <laughs> so you, you put sand, 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 and the small cement and just pour it there. One tip I pass over it, everything. Uh, yes, I used to see it all. I said, eh, I now know why all these covers are collapsing. <laughs> you know? So, so it's important for you and I to join the right conversation. You know? So that we don't enter into something we don't know anything about. Just because we want to make money. King David said in Psalm 131, verse 1, Say, Lord, I have given up my pride and turned away from my arrogance. He said, I am not concerned with great matters or with subjects too difficult for me. I don't, I don't begin to look for things I don't know anything about. Instead, I am content and at peace. As a child lies quietly in his mother's arms, so my heart is quiet within me. He said, Israel, trust in the Lord now and forever. Have a quiet confidence in God. Don't, don't, don't let the, the evil conversation affect you. You know, say no to all these evil conversations. Stay on the path of godliness. Because God is coming. God is coming. So these believers feared the Lord. What exactly does this mean? They feared the Lord, which means they held him in awe. And because of that fear, you know, like one man said, they, they, uh, 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 they, they asked him, all your friends are into all this, um, if it's ripe, cut it. If it's not ripe, cut it. Like we say in Ibo land. Yes, you know, so, so you see, so you see, they told him, say, ah, all, your, all your relations are into this thing and they're making a lot of money. I cannot forget the answer the man gave them. I cannot forget it. He said to them, the Bible has tied my hands. Yes, so I cannot join. The Bible has tied my hands. The Bible. Yeah, and I should be saying such things to people. The Bible has what? Yes, it has tied my hands. I cannot, I cannot join that. I cannot join that. Okay? And that's why the psalmist said, Psalm 97 verse 10, the Lord, this is the New Revised Standard Version, the Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Verse 11, light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Yes, yes, that is, that is what we are called to do. So that after some time, the same people will be coming and needing what? Counsel. Yes. Needing counsel. Needing help. Because they've believed a lie. That's why Proverbs 16, 25. Sometimes there is a way that seems to be right. Okay? Because people are may, may prospering through it. But in the end, it is the way to death. So, it is by the fear of the Lord that men depart from iniquity. King Solomon said in Proverbs 16, 6 to 8, by loyalty and faithfulness, iniquities are told. And by the fear of the Lord, you and I can avoid evil. Because the fear of the Lord follows you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Whether it is light or dark, you know, whether it is local or abroad, wherever you go, you know, I tell the story. I tell the story of a flight I took from Brussels to Leon. Brussels to Leon. You know, I was the only black man in that plane. And they served us dinner. So if they ask you, what do you want? Fish or meat? 
if you say fish, they will give you the right wine. You know? So I said fish. I think it's white wine they gave me. You know? Then those who said meat, they gave them uh, red wine. Uh -huh. So after the woman uh, 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 finished serving, I said, can I have water? She must have looked at me. This bushman. <laughs> They've given him the right... Uh, yes. But you see, because I was the only black person there, I can look right, look left, I say, ah, at last I can. <laughs> All this wine, let me even uh, enjoy it a little. After all, there is no... Nobody here. Yes, I'm the only black man. What is the possibility that one Oibo man here will come to Four Square? And say, that your pastor, hey, 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 on the flight from Brussels to Lyon, he was just a, uh, uh -huh. you know, that possibility, it did not exist. It did not exist. So you can think up, think down, you say, ah, I can, I can at least do this one. Mm -hmm. But God, whether you are the only place, person, or the only, God is there watching, watching. That because you thought you are the only, you, you will not be discovered. You can now do what is, uh, you don't normally do. Yes, yes. So that's what a preacher, um, a preacher asked a congregation. He said, if you are absolutely sure that you will not be found out, will you do something wrong? That's a question everybody has to answer. You are absolutely sure that there's no way this thing can be found out. Will you do something wrong? That is the challenge of our calling. That's why you and I must join the right conversation of people who are encouraging us to, to hang in there, to hold steady, to follow the Lord, to love the Lord, to walk in integrity and honesty before God. Now, the true believers, they have their own conversation. They met together, not to complain, no, no, not to complain. It's to encourage one another by saying, it is good to wait for who? Yes, wait for God. No, to encourage one another. It is good. No matter what is happening, no matter how difficult, no matter how pressured you are, let us wait for the Lord. It is good, like the Bible says, to wait upon the Lord. It is good. It is a good thing to wait upon the Lord. That is a conversation that you and I should join. Okay? Men and women determined to bring about change through the power of God and by the program of God. Okay? So, as we look all around us at what is going on, please seek to join the right conversation. Look for the company of men and women who are faithful to their God, who love the Lord, who love his word. Join them because the hope of the nation is, is hanging on them. The hope of the nation is hanging on those people who are faithful to God because they will bring down the anointing for change. I've told you here, the anointing doesn't hang in the air. The anointing raises some people. They will be the ones who will carry the anointing when God is ready. He said, when I am ready. That is the point. Moses thought God was ready when he was 40. God get, got him off to Midian for another 40 years. And then when God was ready, he said, Moses, it's time. That thing you wanted to do when you were 40, we are ready to do it now. Moses said, I've already retired. <laughs> so, 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 so he retired before God was ready to begin. So it is important for you and I to join the right conversation. You know, men and women who are believing that the things that are visible, they came from things that are not what? Visible, because a lot of people are wondering, how, how can a, cor a corrupt Nigeria transform to a righteous Nigeria? I said heaven has the blueprint. Oh, yes. It's the same thing with Israel in Egypt. How can, how can slaves, no gun, no army, nothing, 
will then suddenly be free. They say the probability is what? Zero. Zero. But God had the blueprint. Okay, so that's what you and I must continually encourage ourselves daily that God has the blueprint. No matter who is discouraging us, no matter who is making us lose hope, standing steady, join the conversation of men and women who believe God that, yes, that word of prophecy must come true. A corrupt Nigeria will metamorphose into a righteous Nigeria. Can somebody say amen to that? Right, right. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. The Bible said, watch out to, I saw the wicked. They are prospering everywhere. You know, like the Green Bay Three. Then another moment, I looked for them. They were gone. I looked for them and they were gone. Lord, send down revival. Lord, send down revival. Lord, send down revival. And let it begin with me. Hallelujah, Lord. Send down river, oh Lord, send down river, I vow, Lord, send down river, and let it begin with me. The Bible tells us that God does all things after the counsel of his own will. That's why we wait on the Lord. Yes, the Lord will come. He will come. He will surely come. But we must position ourselves to carry the anointing. And so ask him, Lord, send revival into my soul. No matter what my circumstances are saying. No matter what challenges and difficulties I'm facing. Send revival into my soul that I may hope in the Lord, that I may hold steady with the Lord, so that when you come to visit, oh, you will remember me, you will anoint me, you will empower me. When you come to visit, you are surely coming to visit, oh God. When you come to visit, oh, remember your servant, oh God. Remember your child, O God, who has waited for you in the path of godliness and righteousness so that your kingdom will prosper through our lives all to the glory of your holy name. For it is in Jesus' awesome name we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, we go to uh, communion. Okay, we take our hymn. <clears throat> God is here and that to bless us. <clears throat> God, <clears throat> God is here and that to bless us with the Spirit's quickening power. See the cloud already bending, waits to drop the grateful shout. Let it come, O oh Lord, we pray thee. Let the shower of blessing fall. We are waiting, we are waiting. Oh, revive the hearts of all. God is here with 
feel his breath.